All that is left to do for us is to take a look at four simple light sources and two complex light sources with multiple components. In Add panel, Light, we have already worked with Skylight. Next up, let's select Directional Light. It doesn't matter where this light is positioned. While rotating it, this light will affect the whole scene. Here we have its intensity, then its color. We can select any color we want, source angle, which is blur. The limit for this value is 5, but manually we can set it higher. This is a very handy function for rotating the sun. If you hold Ctrl plus L while then letting go of L, but still holding Ctrl and moving your mouse, this way you can control the rotation of the sun. Source soft angle is responsible for blur of the sun in reflections. Adjust this setting and look how the blur changes in the reflection. This setting can also be changed manually with no limits. If you make material more reflective, then you can see how the sun gets more blurry in the reflection. This can be useful when you need the flare to be not so clear and blurry. I use this often when there is a strong reflection from the sun on the floor or you can turn off reflection from the light source altogether by adjusting the specular parameter. Zero means that reflection is turned off completely, one reflection is at maximum. Or you can use in-between values. The light color can be changed not only manually, but also through temperature by ticking the Use Temperature option and making the color colder or warmer. Effects Word option will turn off the light source completely. Cast shadows will turn off shadows. Indirect lighting intensity increases global illumination intensity from the light source. And volumetric scattering intensity parameter results in volumetric lighting. By default, all light sources are created with stationary setting. I will change the selected directional light to a static one. Preview icons will appear on the surfaces. This means that the scene requires the lighting to be baked. Hold Ctrl, press L and move the mouse to rotate the sun. After the baking is done, the preview icons will disappear. The lighting in the scene is baked, but the shadows from the static light source look unnatural. In this case, we need to use stationary. Light pattern won't be baked into the scene, it will remain dynamic and we will avoid these strange artifacts at the borders and while the global illumination from the sun will be baked into the scene. Change the sun to stationary and bake the lighting. The sun plate is Control in the global illumination while leaving the direct light dynamic. We can see this by rotating it. I will increase the value of global illumination from the sun and bake the lighting. It has become brighter. I'll turn it to 1 and bake the lighting once again. Next is volumetric scattering. I'll show you how so-called gold trace effect volumetric lighting works. For this effect to work, we need to add fog, go to lead mode that displays materials. This effect won't be seen in lighting only mode. Here we can see that the effect already works outside the window. In the fog settings we need to turn on volumetric fog to enable volumetric lighting. And in directional light we need to turn on light shaft occlusion to display rays. And then this beautiful effect starts working in real time. We can amplify this effect by increasing the volumetric scattering density setting. I will rotate the sun looking for an interesting position in order to create nice position for the rays. We can use BP Sphere to create a background outside the window. If you want to put a background outside the window, it will overlap with the effect because of its volume. So we need exactly the sky blueprint, for example, standard blueprint sky sphere. I will delete the fog and put another light source. Light, point light. Here we can see the reflection of this light source. I will lower its intensity. We can change its color as well. I can see attenuation radius if I press D. This determines how far the light source will reach. Source radius will change the size of the light source, while soft source radius just like the sun will make the source more blurry and soft in reflections. Source length determines the length of the light source. I will rotate this point light a few times. I will delete the sun for now, so it doesn't get in the way. This way we can light up some dark places or use a light bulb. 
Don't overuse the slide source, since it's omnidirectional and it will disrupt shadows. So use it as rarely as possible. Let's take a look at before and after, so we can add a bit more light. This should be done carefully. Also, we can use the temperature, make it warmer or colder. This is FX world and cast shadows. So right now we have shadows. And now we turn it off. Right now this object is stationary, let's try baking the light. Here we have additional fill light. Let's compare. Now if I turn off this light source, we can turn it off and it won't emit light, but the global illumination from it will remain. With global illumination, additional light source and without it. This way we can light up dark places. Let's look at the next light source. Lights, rectangular light. It's mostly used to light up some places. It also has such settings as intensity, color, attenuation, radius, and size. And bar door angle. A more concentrated result. 88 degrees. Bando length which determines where the light source starts emitting light. For example, we can use this to highlight something. The settings here are identical to those for other light sources. For example, we can make the highlight warmer. Also, we can use it as an additional light source. For example, outside the window where there isn't enough light. The result wasn't that good with static, so I switched to stationary and bake the light in once again. Now the result is better. We can also see some noise. This noise can be removed by adjusting the number of samples per pixel. Now there is less noise. Here, if compared to this setting at 1, then we set it to 4, there is less noise. Let's take a look at the next light source. This is HDRI Backdrop. This is a sort of geometry that comes along with HDRI. This is how the whole volume looks like, which the HDRI is applied to. And also, as a part of this plugin blueprint, here is the cube map. You can adjust the intensity, size, and also to lower this parameter. We'll need ray tracing. We need to lower this parameter until the HDRI looks good. We can also see that some artifacts have appeared. This is because you almost always need to use project settings for ray trace shadows or disable them in skylight. And use static. Let's bake the lighting and see how it works. Although we need to disable the previous skylight that stands separately. Because the emitted light is still coming from it. Now we bake the lighting. As you can see, since there is nothing, no sky, 
we can use specify cube map, for example, in the backdrop. Here. And use white HDRI. And disable this here. So skylight backdrop doesn't emit ray traced light. And let's bake the lighting. Here we can see how HDRI works. I will talk about the sun and sky instrument and use this warm light as an example. This instrument is similar to daylight system in 3D Max, which allows to make the lighting accurate according to geolocation and time. Now I will delete sun and sky. Skylight is turned off right now. The effects ward option is unticked. I bake the lighting. I have no light, only the rectangular one which emits dynamic light from the window. I add sun and sky. As always, we have overexposure. We need to select this blueprint and go to its components. Here we have mesh, which is just an icon of this blueprint, skylight, which you already know, and directional light. All this noise comes from the skylight. Right now the light is completely dynamic. Well, first thing we need to do is lower the intensity of the sun and skylight. Right now, the fill light is ray traced, and in order to remove the noise, we need to increase the samples per pixel setting. It needs to go quite high up for the noise to disappear, sometimes as high as 32. There is no more noise, but we won't be using skylight as movable, and sun and sky works well with lumen. I will talk about this technology in another video. In directional light, we need to select stationary so the lighting is baked properly. And don't forget to select disabled for ray traced shadows here in advanced in skylight. I'll bake the lighting as it is, and then show how to set up lighting according to length, width and time. We shouldn't also forget to set sample per pixel for ray tracing, the quality of ray tracing for the sun a bit higher. In order to change the position of this sun according to geolocation and time, we need to go to the map and, for example, I'll use Auckland CBD and this project. For example, I put my mark here and there are our length and width. I need to copy the first value, Ctrl C, we need to select the upper level of the plugin and paste the copied value. And then do the same with the second value. It's necessary to enter the time zone. Enter your CD and country. For example, New Zealand and it is plus 13, OK. This means I need to write 13 here in time zone. On the 21st of September at 1 pm, the sun will be in this position. And this is not standard time, but solar time. So if you want to write 1330, then we will write not like this, but 1350. And if we want to write 3015, then we need to write 3025. For example, I'll set it to 18, 6 hours. At 6 pm the sun will be in this position and at 18.30 the sun will be in this position. We can disconnect the position of the sun from geolocation and for example rotate it however we want. We'll make the sun lower for example like this and rotate it a bit. Like this. We can lower it a bit more. Let's take a look how the sun will look at 19 hours or 19.30, etc. The sun became so warm that the light is now slightly red. Directional light, stationary, intensity of the sun, as well as source soft angle, everything's the same as in common direct light. Let's see how the lighting will look after baking it. I'll change the settings a bit. For example, set this 1915 and bake the lighting once again. Let's see how the lighting works at this time. We can see how the sun changes with different time. And I would like something in between, to reach some sort of in-between result. For example, 1930. In my opinion, the intensity of the sun is too high. I will set the intensity to half as much and bake the lighting once again. I will lower the intensity of the sun even more. For example, let's set it to 15. Bake the lighting once more. It's got darker, but we can first of all rotate the sun a bit differently, for example like this, make the lighting more interesting. Secondly, we can set the global illumination value for directional light higher. For example, increase it four times more. No, let's stop at three. I'll bake the light in one more time. Now there is more fill light from the sun, but there is practically no fill light from the skylight. So I select skylight and triple the intensity. The scene is brighter now. There is more light coming from the sky. Though I'll delete the rectangular light so it doesn't get in the way. 
I think I need to increase the sky light even more, so there is even more of this cold field light. Let's quadruple it, or even more. And I'll bake the lighting once again. Yeah, I like this lighting. And I would like to say that this is an interesting lighting for the interior. This can be used, I guess, but I use this sort of lighting for exterior scenes more often.